Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. O I A A A A A H A H I H I H Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. And today we are going to take a look at the second geometry puzzle problem here on this Advent Calendar. I actually stumbled across this problem on Facebook. I got it as an advertisement from Perian.org. And it was a bit different, but Perian.org has those really nice advertisements everywhere, on, on Facebook, etc. Et and they really want to make you think about the stuff. And it's, it, it's a really nice concept, just putting those little problems there and you can pause and ponder about it. And we are going to work through this problem today. This is actually one exercise on the website. So when you take a look at the geometry course and then with the length and area stuff. And this thing right here is a perfect square. And we would like to find out the A in here, our area of this little square. Okay, this is also a square. I'm not good at drawing stuff. There's probably a better sketch right here from their actual website. And I haven't worked through this problem myself up until now. And, and we are going to see what it's going to vary to and then I can check on the website if it's actually correct. When we are doing geometry on this channel, I always do analytic geometry. So we are going to dive right in. I'm going to rotate this thing right here a little bit and we are going to put it into a coordinate system. So let us do a little transformation and see if this works out. That should actually be quite easy because if this is a square, we only need to find out the distance from this point to this point. In the Euclidean metric, then we have the side length and yeah, coolio. Now, if we put it into a coordinate system, we are going to have our square and we also have, what do we actually need? We only need this function, this function and this function, okay? And then the intersection points. Meaning what we are interested in is this point right here. This is exactly at 10, okay? It's going to make half of our complete side, side length, with this, uh, which is 20. Meaning we have this linear function. Also, this up here is also another linear function and we have on 10, yet another linear function. Okay, those are the three we are actually interested in. I'm going to call this thing F, this right here is G, and this right here is H. Now let us construct our linear functions. Let us see what those points of intersections, etc., actually are. If we take a look at F of X, okay, in normal case we have something like AX plus B. Now, our Y intercept is exactly at zero, leaving us with just AX. Now, what is the other point that we have up, uh, up here? Meaning this right here is half the side length, meaning it's going to be 10 up here. So this right here is our x coordinate, 10. But what is the y coordinate is exactly 20. Meaning we have run over rise, uh, rise over run for our slope, meaning 20 over 10 makes 2 times x. This is our f of x and this should actually check out. Now what about our g of x? Our g of x is basically a normal on our f, but I'm going to construct it properly. So g of x is also of the form ax plus b. What is our y-intercept? It's exactly at 10, meaning it's going to be ax plus 10. Now, also from here on out, what is rise over run? We are going to have this point Okay, this point up here is actually nothing other than 0, 10. Okay, and this point down here where it's also going to intersect is 0, 20. I hope you agree with me. Meaning we need to have a negative slope. Okay, it's, it's monotonally decreasing all the time. Um, no, uh, 20, 0. Okay, 20, 0. Like I said, I, I, I haven't done this before. Um, I, I mixed X and Y up. Meaning overall, we are going to have 10 over 20. Yeah, uh, it's the normal, okay, it's the normal, it does make sense, so it needs to be negative 1 over m when it comes to our f. Meaning overall, rise over run is going to give us negative 1 half x plus 10. I hope this does make sense to you, okay, it's just simple um, third class analysis we are doing here, calculus. Okay, it's, it's pretty trivial. What about our h? h of x is also of the form ax plus b. Now, what is our y-intercept? Okay, this h is nothing other than our f being shifted by 10 to the right. But our f 
is going to grow at a rate of 2, meaning if we are going to shift the 10 to the right, it means it's 20 downwards. Okay, I, I hope you can see where this comes from. You can also construct this right here yet again, our square, and it's going to go through the whole square yet again with a side length of 20. Meaning our y-intercept is at negative 20. This is ax minus 20. But what is our a? Our a is exactly yet again 2 because it's going to grow at the same rate our h. Meaning it's going to be 2x minus 20. Now, this is good. Let us find out the intersection points of at first f and g. So when is f equal to g? Well, this is exactly the case when we have 2x being equal to negative 1 half x plus 10. Meaning overall we can add this on both sides. Meaning this is nothing but 4 over 2. So we have 5 over 2 times x being equal to 10. Now we can divide bo uh, both sides by um, 5 over 2, leaving us overall with 4, right? Does this make sense? Oh yeah, it, it kind of checks out even here. It means our x coordinate is nothing other than 4. Dividing by 5, okay, this, yeah, ex exactly. Meaning, what is our y coordinate? Then we have, it, it doesn't quite matter where we plug it in, let us plug it in here. This means this is nothing but 8. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit below 10, okay? <laughs> Make, makes sense. Y is nothing other but 8. Meaning, if we have our P1, P1 is thus, Nothing other than 4,8. Now what else do we have? We are going to take a look at the intersection of h and g. Yes, h and g. When is g equal to h? Well, this is exactly the case when we have negative 1 half x plus 10 being equal to 2x minus 20. Meaning we can yeah, let us let us go through this. So, so we are going to add 20 on both sides and we are going to at one half x on both sides, meaning overall five over four x is thus 30. Meaning our x is going to be, okay, this makes six, so 24. Um, have I done something incorrectly? Let me take a look for a second. This goes down 20. This Oh no, it was 5 over 2. Oh goodness, I was already wondering. This doesn't make any sense. It, it, it couldn't possibly be here. We had 5 over 2, okay? I, for, for some reason, I was at 5 over 4. So we are going to land at 12, right? Yeah, 12. Okay, it, it does make perfect sense because before our point was 2 below our 10. Okay, this makes 8 and now it's 2 uh, above our 10. Okay, yeah, it, it, it makes sense. Meaning our x is thus equal to 12. Meaning, what about our y is thus equal to what's the y coordinate of our point P2? I'm going to put it like this. Doesn't matter where we plug it in. If we plug our um, 12 into here, we are going to get 4. 4 years, maybe, we are going to see. Meaning, our P2 is thus nothing other than 12,4. You can probably go about this really easily, okay, using just some simple trigonometry stuff, but, but I'm not about this. I, I don't like this trigonometry stuff. I, I like this way more. Meaning, if we were to take a look at the Euclidean metric, Papa Pythagoras between P2 and P1, we're going to be left with the square root of, okay, um, P1 minus P2, so those coordinates. Where is P1 exactly? Okay, we are going to get four minus 12, squared and then we are going to get 8 minus 4 plus 8 minus 4 squared. Overall this is going to give us 8 is 64 square root of 64 and also we are going to get plus this is going to give us 416 makes a square root of 80 overall meaning the area of our little square is going to be square root of 80 squared, meaning it's 80. And we could plug this into a brilliant and see if it's right. There's probably going to be some simulation at the end or some um, video capture. But before we actually end the video, I, I, I hope you did enjoy this one. I certainly did. It's, it's a nice problem to work for and I hope this right here is correct. I would like to thank Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. Who would have thought that Brilliant.org sponsored this video right here? Today's problem is part of Brilliant's practice section. 
Besides this awesome selection of various problems in mathematics, geometry, physics and many more, Preint upgraded their practice section to even greater heights. As previously seen in my live streams, Brilliant offers you the service to work actively through a variety of courses, including, of course, a broad range of geometry problems, just like this one. Especially interesting to me are their new interactive geometry courses, which provide you with an active learning experience. They feature detailed animations, solutions and explanations and want you to experience geometry and all topics in maths and science in an intuitive and fun way on first hand. So if you are still looking for an amazing and unique Christmas present to surprise a curious family member or even just yourself, then make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it you can try out Brilliant for free and the first 200 people to use the link get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So if you really feel like supporting the channel, make sure to check out Brilliant and also you can support the channel in various other ways. And up until next video, have flamble day. Ciao!